It was Christmas Eve, and Old Bear and the other toys had spent all morning decorating the tree. It's the biggest Christmas tree I've ever seen, said Bramble. A zebra arrived with another cartload of decorations. Jolly and Duck were hanging things from the lowest branches, while Ruff bounced around with excitement. Do mind your tail, Ruff, said Duck. We don't want you to knock the decorations off. Rabbit was busy jumping up and down on the branches of the tree, making sure everything was tied on really well. He nearly bounced on Sailor, who was on the branch below, weaving tinsel in and out and round and round to make the tree sparkle. It's beginning to look very full, said Old Bear, as he stood back to admire their hard work. There's hardly room for anything else. But it still doesn't look quite right, said Duck. It isn't going to fall over, is it? called Little Bear. It's a long way down. Duck gave the tree a gentle tug. No, it's safe enough, he said. But I know what's missing. We haven't found anything for the top. Duck's right, said Old Bear. Every tree should have something special on the top. I've got a special bone, said Ruff helpfully. You could have that. No, I don't think a bone would look right. Thank you, Ruff, said Old Bear. I could dress up as a fairy, suggested Little Bear, balancing on one leg and waving a wand. Mm, that would be no good, muttered Duck. You couldn't stay up there all Christmas. What we really need is the big silver star, said Bramwell rummaging through the tissue paper in the box. But it's not in here. Are there more decorations anywhere, Old Bear? Old Bear thought hard. I seem to remember, he said slowly, that there was another box of Christmas things. I think it's in the attic. Well, we can't fly the plane up there, said Bramwell. Not with the tree in the way. No, but look, cried Little Bear. The top of the tree is nearly touching the trapdoor. I can climb into the attic. Old Bear looked anxiously at the ceiling. Are you sure, Little Bear? Of course, said Little Bear, and Rabbit will come with me. Won't you, Rabbit? Yes, please, cried Rabbit, bouncing up and down with excitement. Sailor passed Rabbit the little lantern and a long piece of tinsel to use as a rope. Then they watched as Rabbit jumped from branch to branch, higher and higher up the tree, until at last he arrived at the top, where Little Bear was waiting. I can't quite reach, explained Little Bear. I'll have to climb on your shoulders. Rabbit bent over, and Little Bear scrambled onto his back. When Rabbit stood up, Little Bear stretched as high as he could. He pushed open the trapdoor, took hold of the edge, and pulled himself inside. I did it, he called. Come on, Rabbit, you'll love it up here. Meanwhile, Rabbit had tied the lantern to the piece of tinsel. He threw the other end to Little Bear. I'll, I'll hook it on something, called Little Bear. Then you can climb up too. When it was secure, Rabbit scrambled up the tinsel rope and pulled the lantern up after him. The two toys gazed around. The attic was dark and dusty, and looking up, Little Bear noticed that they were standing under a tiny window. I didn't know there was a window up here, he said, climbing onto a box for a closer look. It's so dirty you can't see out. He rubbed his paw over the pane of glass and peered through the little clear patch. Oh, look, Rabbit, he cried. It's snowing outside. That means we're really ready for Christmas. We've got the tree and the decorations. Now we even have snow. We haven't found the star yet, Rabbit reminded him. By the light from the lantern, Rabbit and Little Bear began to search the attic. There were boxes of books, boxes of clothes, and baskets of odds and ends. Come and see what I've found, called Rabbit. He showed Little Bear a basket of Christmas dressing-up clothes and party hats. Oh, we could have fun with these, said Little Bear, trying on a jeweled crown. 
but the star doesn't seem to be here. Just then, Rabbit noticed a small wooden box. It might be in there, he said. Little Bear lifted the lid of the box and peered inside. It's full of stars, he gasped. They're not real ones, said Rabbit, reaching into the box. They're painted on this. And he pulled out a dark blue starry cloth. Oh, what a pity, sighed Little Bear. Actually, said Rabbit, rummaging in the box, I've wondered where this had got to. It's the box of magic tricks. If we take it back with us, I could put on a magic show. And we could have a party and wear all the hats and things, cried Little Bear. Forgetting all about the lost star, Rabbit and Little Bear had soon bundled everything into the basket and pushed it over to the trapdoor. Rabbit tied some string to the handle of the basket and Little Bear threw the other end to Old Bear and climbed in. Could you lower us down, please? called Rabbit. Old Bear and Bramble began to lower the basket. Do it faster, called Little Bear. I want to show you what we've got. Did you find the star? asked Bramble as the basket touched the floor. Oh dear, said Little Bear. We forgot all about it. But we did find these. We could have a Christmas party and Rabbit's going to do us a magic show. The toys all thought this sounded a wonderful idea and couldn't wait to prepare the room and themselves for the party. Bramble was soon dressed up as one of the three kings and was arranging some of his special snowflake biscuits on a plate. Sailor was also dressed as a king, a king with a camel. Together, Sailor and Camel were decorating the room to make it special for the party. Ruff and Zebra both wanted to dress up as a reindeer, but there was only one pair of antlers and one red nose. You could be an angel instead, said Old Bear trying a nice golden halo on Ruff's head. I know, said Little Bear, who couldn't quite imagine Ruff as an angel. Let's make another pair of antlers for Ruff, then he and Zebra can both be reindeer. Bramwell cut a pair of antlers out of a piece of card and tied them on Ruff's head with a ribbon. There, he said, you look just like one of Father Christmas's reindeer now. Will we see Father Christmas tonight, asked Little Bear. We never do, said Duck. We're always fast asleep when he comes. Old Bear called the toys over. We're ready for a proper party now, he announced. Would you like to play pin the nose on the reindeer? Yes, please, said Little Bear. But Zebra and Ruff looked a bit worried. <laughs> it's all right, laughed Old Bear, showing them a board with a picture of a reindeer on it. This is the reindeer I meant. The noses are in here, announced Old Bear, pointing to a small box. I know, said Bramwell. You're not allowed to look, and the one who gets closest to the right place is the winner. Jolly was the first to have a go. Old Bear tied a handkerchief over his eyes and led him to the reindeer. At first, Jolly couldn't work out where the board was and nearly stuck a red nose on Bramwell but at last he pinned it onto the reindeer's ear. A very good try, said Old Bear. Now who's next? The others all wanted to go, and everybody chose one of the red circles with pins in. Before long, the reindeer was covered in noses. In fact, there were red spots everywhere, except on its nose. I think the one nearest the right place is actually Jolly's, said Old Bear. So Jolly wins, and he handed him a special Christmas pencil as a prize. Can we play something else, cried Little Bear, hoping he would win a prize too. Ta-da! The magic show is now ready, called Rabbit from behind the curtain. Oh, good, cried Little Bear, clapping his paws. The toys hurried to the curtain and sat down to watch the show. You can open the curtain now, called Rabbit. Just pull the string. Sailor gave the string a big tug. But when the curtain opened, 
all they could see was a big top hat. There was no sign of Rabbit. Little Bear went over and peered in. It's empty, he said. He picked up the magic wand and poked it into the hat. Suddenly, there was a flash and a puff of smoke. And there was Rabbit standing in the hat, wearing a magician's cloak. Did I do that? gasped Little Bear. You did, said Rabbit, jumping out of the hat. You can be my assistant if you like. He rolled a piece of paper into a cone shape and handed it to Little Bear. Now hold tight, he said, as he poured water into the cone from a jug. But when Rabbit turned the cone upside down over Little Bear's head, out came a stream of sparkling glitter. The toys stared in amazement. Where did the water go? gasped Jolly. I can't see a puddle. And now, announced Rabbit, for my next trick. He reached into his cape, pulled out a tiny Christmas tree and handed it to Little Bear. Then he produced another. And another. And another. Until Little Bear and the ground were covered in a forest of little trees. Oh, that's real magic whispered Ruff. I wish I could do that with bones. I'll now make you a snowman, announced Rabbit, without any snow. He blew up a white balloon and gave it a little twist in the middle. Then he drew a nose, eyes and a mouth on the balloon until it looked like a little fat snowman. That's very clever, said Old Bear. Well done, Rabbit. And now I will make the snowman disappear, said Rabbit. He draped the cloth over the balloon, uttered a few magic words, and poked it with his wand. When Little Bear lifted the cloth, the snowman was gone. Now for my last trick, said Rabbit. And he reached into the trunk and brought out a cardboard tube. He turned to Little Bear. Now make sure it's empty, he said then tap it three times with the magic wand. Little Bear peered into the end of the tube. There's nothing in it, he announced. He tapped the tube three times, and Rabbit began to pull out something brightly colored. But he didn't stop. He kept pulling out more and more. They're socks, cried Jolly. They're Christmas stockings, laughed Old Bear. Christmas stockings to hang up tonight. If you're very good, they might be full of presents in the morning. Everyone clapped and cheered as Rabbit took a bow at the end of the show. Then they turned to the plate of snowflake biscuits. I think when you've finished eating, it will be time for bed, said Old Bear. It's been a wonderful day, but I expect we'll all want to be up early tomorrow. Is it really Christmas Day tomorrow? asked Little Bear as Bramwell helped him into his pyjamas. Oh, I can hardly wait. I don't think I'll ever get to sleep tonight. I'm much too excited about Father Christmas coming. But it had been a busy day, and very soon Little Bear and all the other toys were fast asleep. It was still night time when Little Bear woke up, but the room was bright with the glow from the Christmas tree lights. Little Bear looked across at the Christmas tree and suddenly remembered the missing star. Just doesn't look ready for Christmas, he said to himself, without something on the top. Suddenly an idea came to him. If I'm really quick, he thought, I could climb up to the attic, find the star and be back in bed before Father Christmas comes. The others will wake up in the morning, see the star, and think it's magic. Being careful not to disturb the others, Little Bear slipped down from the bed. He stopped to check the stockings just in case, but they were still empty. Then very quietly, he crept across the room. When he reached the Christmas tree, he unhooked his lantern, slipped it over his shoulder, and began to climb. He had to be careful not to make the little glass bells ring in case they woke the others. On he climbed, 
past the shiny silver balls, past the sparkling tangles of tinsel and the birds with the shimmering tails. Then at last he arrived at the topmost branch and there was the tinsel rope still dangling down from the attic. Little Bear dared himself to look down. He could see Old Bear and the others fast asleep in bed and almost wished he was there too. But I'm looking for the star, he reminded himself, and that's a very important thing to do. Once he was inside the attic, Little Bear held his lantern high and began to search for the star in all the places they'd missed in the morning. He peered inside a roll of carpet between two boxes of dusty books. He looked in an empty bird cage and under some old picture frames. Then, suddenly, he saw something catch the light from the lantern. He bent down and picked it up. It was a funny-shaped piece of metal, all crumpled and spiky. Little Bear suddenly realized what he'd found. It was the missing star, or rather, it had been. It didn't look much like a star anymore. Someone must have trodden on it, he thought sadly. I wonder whether I could mend it. He was still staring at the star when he heard a funny noise above his head. Footsteps, he gasped. It must be Father Christmas. He rushed to the little window to look out, but it was covered in a thick layer of snow. I can't see anything, he cried. I'll have to open it. He lifted the bolt that fastened the window and pushed it open. As he did so, an avalanche of snow from above the window rushed past, knocking the lantern out of his paws. He tried to catch it, but lost his balance, and whoosh, he was sliding down and down the roof. Then bump, he landed in the gutter up to his chin in snow. Help, he cried with a mouthful of snow. Help! I'm stuck! But all was quiet. Little Bear began to wish that he had stayed tucked up in bed. Then suddenly, something white came gliding out of the attic window and landed right beside him in the snow. It's an angel, thought Little Bear, peeping out from behind his paws. Then he saw it wasn't an angel after all. It was Hoot. Hello, Little Bear, she said. I heard you calling. What are you doing out here? Little Bear explained about the star and the noises on the roof. If it was Father Christmas, he said, I must get back to bed quickly or he won't leave me any presents. Mm, you might be right, said Hoot. Climb up and I'll fly you there. Little Bear scrambled onto Hoot's back, still clutching his crumpled star. Then Hoot spread her wings and took off. As they flew up in the air, the first rays of the morning sun were creeping over the chimney pots. It's nearly Christmas Day, said Hoot. Little Bear looked down at the snowy roof and suddenly gave a cry of excitement. Look! Down there, he shouted, pointing at the snow below. Footsteps! Big footsteps leading to the chimney! It was Father Christmas, I heard. Hoot flew close to the chimney pot so that they could have a better look. Little Bear leaned over to peer into the chimney. Do be careful, called Hoot, but it was too late. Little Bear toppled off, fell through the air, and disappeared down the chimney. Meanwhile, in the playroom, the toys had all woken up. Happy Christmas, they cried, as they hurried to the end of the bed to look at their stockings. He's been, cried Rabbit, jumping up and down. Can we open our presents now, old Bear? But Old Bear was looking all around. Where's Little Bear? he asked anxiously. We can't open anything without him. Little Bear, called Bramble. Where are you? They all began to search. Then suddenly, Ruff stopped by the fireplace. I heard something, he barked. I think it's Father Christmas, and he's stuck up the chimney. I'll have a look, said Jolly. And standing in the empty hearth, he poked his head up the chimney. Well, it isn't Father Christmas, he called, but I think you'll be pleased to see who I've found. And out he came with a very sooty little bear, clinging to his horns. 
Oh, little bear, cried Bramble. What were you doing up there? I was looking for the Christmas star, said little bear. And then I heard Father Christmas. And then I slid down the roof and Hoot rescued me, but I fell down the chimney and got stuck. And I found the star, but it's all crumpled and rusty. Never mind, said old bear. We're just glad you're here, all safe and sound. And so am I, said Hoot, arriving at that moment from the attic. I was rather worried when you disappeared down the chimney. Are you sure you're all right, little bear? <laughs> yes, thank you, sniffed little bear. But I wasn't here when Father Christmas came. He won't have left me any presents. I think he guessed you weren't far away, said old bear. And he showed little bear the row of stockings, all full to the top with presents. Oh, gasped little bear. He didn't forget. Can I open one? We can all open our presents now you're here, said Duck. Little bear picked out a funny-shaped parcel from the top of his stocking and tore off the paper. And there was the shiniest, sparkliest silver star he'd ever seen. Oh, it's lovely, he cried. I'll hang it on the tree right now. No, wait, said Hoot. I'll go. You've had enough climbing adventures for one day. And taking the star from Little Bear, she flew off towards the Christmas tree. The toys all watched as Hoot hung the star from the very top branch. There you are, she called. The tree really looks ready now. Happy Christmas, everyone!